I, Rick McIver, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Municipal Affairs for the province of Alberta. So help me God. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we have more reactions from the Alberta Cabinet swearing-in ceremony that took place on June 9th in Edmonton. Now, a few days has passed since Premier Smith swore in her new cabinet, and joining us for a one-on-one -on -one interview is Kathy Heron, President of the Alberta Municipalities. The Cabinet Shuffle has brought about some significant changes – one of which is the transition of Rebecca Schultz from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs to the Ministry of Environment. And returning to the position of Minister of Municipal Affairs is none other than the Honourable Rick McIver, who previously held this role under Jason Kenney's leadership. With President Heron, we will be delving into her perspectives on this newly formed government. We will explore their expectations, hopes, and concerns as Alberta municipalities look to collaborate with the provincial government on matters of municipal governments. So, let's go. Uh, so, President Heron, uh, Premier Daniel Smith announced her cabinet on Friday morning. Uh, what's the initial reaction from an Alberta, Alberta municipality standpoint? Uh, you know, from my standpoint, I think uh, having Minister MacGyver back as municipal affairs is probably a good thing. Um, I would have been happy with Rebecca as well, but uh, it's just nice to have the minister um, know what they're doing know the issues of municipalities, be familiar with our association, be familiar with uh, some of the needs that communities across Alberta have. Um, and quite often we get a brand new person in municipal affairs. It feels like sometimes a bit of a training ground for steps up in ministries, which is disappointing, but uh, at least there's no training wheels that we have to uh, attach. We'll be able to jump right back in. You mentioned kind of the elephant in the room. The The new cabinet is similar faces, but new portfolios. Uh, does this make Alberta municipalities' job a little bit harder? Because you're going to have to catch people up, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be justice, whether it be uh, health ministries, uh, to the issues that are facing the municipalities across Alberta? Yeah, for those new ministers that are unfamiliar with their um, cabinet or their ministry, then, yeah, there'll be a little bit of... Um, catching up in education, I guess you could say, uh, really quite often we rely on the staff at the province to, to do that work. And I did hear that there was some DMs being switched around as well. So that, that could cause a little bit of uh, confusion and may delay a few things. So that's why, again, it's good to have MacGyver back in his seat. So what's priority number one for Alberta municipalities with this new cabinet? I'm assuming meeting with the new ministers and meeting with the new de uh, deputy ministers as well. But what's priority number one for you and the Alberta municipalities? It's, that's an easy question to answer because it's <laughs> local government fiscal framework. We uh, had started in negotiations with our sister association, RMA, um, right before the election, or so right before the writ was dropped with Minister Schultz about how we were gonna allocate out that pot of money. And of course that gets put on hold as soon as the writ was dropped. So we need to get right back into that. Are you hoping to do that sooner rather than later? Because I can imagine we are just about four days after the cabinet shuffle. Have you already had contact with the ministries from uh, either Rick McIver's office or the deputy minister, or are you hoping to get that started this week? Probably get that done this week. I sent Minister MacGyver a quick text and congratulations and told him I was looking forward to working with him. Did my um, congratulatory tweet. So it was public that we knew that we had him and we were happy that with him. Uh, so yeah, I think probably this week the letters will go out or maybe he will even reach out to us to, to get that started. Now, during the campaign, uh, Alberta municipalities released uh, three of their big 
key priorities for Alberta municipalities. You're going to be dealing with uh, Minister Lagrange in health. You're going to be dealing with Minister McIver, uh, Minister Nerdoff for infrastructure, uh, and uh, Minister Ellis for public safety, but also Minister Amory. Um, are you hoping, besides just Minister McIver, to also sit down with the other ministers that I just mentioned as well? Yeah, uh, I'll say that it was a bit of a loss to lose um, Jason Copping as Minister of Health. He he was actually one of the stronger ones, and I really enjoyed working with him, especially on the uh, ambulance file. The, he did a committee, the EMS Provincial Advisory Committee last year, and he threw so many resources into that committee and was really passionate about it. So that's a loss. And so, yes, uh, the new minister will have to become familiar with especially EMS. And, of course, Throughout the whole election, we talked about um, physician and family doctor attraction to some of the more rem remote rural areas in Alberta, and that really needs to happen. Minister Ellis back in public safety is a good thing because, again, he's very familiar with the file. He was there before the election, and he's there again, so I, I will be touching base with him, especially when it comes to their plans for provincial policing. Is that a still a priority that you think that this government needs to seriously consider the thoughts of what Alberta municipalities across Alberta are saying? Because I know yeah. uh, Minister Jones, uh, not Minister Jones, Mayor Jones from Legal said that if they do go forward, they need to hold a referendum because it was not part of their platform. Are you going to be advocating if this goes forward that a referendum must be called? It's a funny question you just asked. You said, is that a priority? If, if it's a priority for Albertans, should it be a priority for the ministry? Well, <laughs> yes, I guess that's a pretty obvious answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we're hearing from mayors uh, across the province that we do not want provincial policing. The public, uh, uh, Janet Brown's poll indicated that Albertans want to say, so I hope they listen to that. I mean, that seems fairly obvious to me. I, I have no idea. Honestly, this is one of the ones that I cannot guess one way or another what they're going to do. They seemed very um, determined with provincial policing, and our premier has is on record saying that is the right direction. But the conversation was really quiet during the campaign, and um, I think they were maybe shifting their focus to encouraging some of the larger mid-sized cities to go down the municipal police force route. And so they might let that play out a little bit before they do anything next. In our previous conversation, when uh, we talked after the election and Premier Smith had won, there was a large rural presence in this government. And in this cabinet, we're seeing a semi larger portion of rural MLAs compared to uh, the big cities of Calgary and Edmonton. Uh, I want to get your reaction on that perspective, but also how you see yourself now trying to balance the needs of the rurals with what's going on within uh, Edmonton of this council of undefe or council of defeated uh, representation that the premier has uh, coyed about. Uh, do you see yourself sort of hopefully having an ear to the premier about what's going on in Edmonton and in municipalities that aren't represented at this cabinet table? I think it depends on your definition of rural. To tell you the honest truth, uh, yeah. I actually heard the Premier speaking, I think it was just last week, about this issue. And I, I actually really was pleased with her answer. She pointed out the fact that there are MLAs that have been elected across this province outside of Edmonton and Calgary, but in some of the urban areas, Grand Prairie, Stewart Park, St. Albert, Spruce Grove, um, you know, those are those are not rural but they're considered rural, you know, in the general scheme of, of two big cities and the rest of Alberta. So her answer was really, she was gonna lean on some of those MLAs and um, you saw it, Nate Lubish is in the cabinet, um, Cyril Turton from Spruce Grove got his first cabinet position. Um, my MLA, Del Nally's back there. So uh, that's good news. That's not just all Edmonton and Calgary and not just all very, you know, the, the true definition of rural. So I think that will help uh, when it comes to her advisors in Edmonton. Uh, I th I've said this many times, probably even to you, that my thoughts are there's duly elected people in the city of Edmonton that she needs to consult with. They might not be in her party, but as we both know, the two parties have very similar uh, ideas on about 90% of the issues. It's just those few 10% that they differ. So why not lean on those NDP MLAs in Edmonton? They will have the, the ear to their people. They will be able to understand uh, the needs of Edmontonians. And that's her 
best and greatest resource. What advice are you going to be giving your members across Alberta when it comes to this new cabinet? Because I can imagine the issues that are prevalent in Grand Prairie are not these similar in, uh, issues that are in Medicine Hat or even Lloydminster or even up in Fort McMurray. So when you're speaking to your members over the next coming weeks and days, what are you going to be telling them about how to... Uh, hopefully work with this cabinet, work with this government, while also sort of working with Alberta municipalities to advocate for their local issues, but provincial-wide issues as well? So right in the next two weeks, so starting this week, we're, um, we're going to be traveling around Alberta. I'm, yeah. There's My association will be in Wembley, Delburn, St. Paul, Spruce Grove, and Diamond Valley. So we're, we are traveling around right now. It's our summer leaders caucus getting getting together with all the mayors and councils and having that exact conversation. So that's, it's very timely. We'll be encouraging them to stick to those three main areas of infrastructure, public safety and community health. Those still remain uh, our biggest topics and we need to press on that. Honestly, the, the issues are shockingly the same. We all need infrastructure money. So I'm gonna be asking every mayor and councillor to speak to their current MLA, their new MLA, whatever it is, and, and really stress how that LGFF money that I mentioned at the beginning of the interview needs to go to where the people are. You know, when you talk about rural healthcare, those doctors are setting up in a town or a village. They're not setting up in the middle of a farmer's field, right? So it needs to go to those kind of quality of life and the investment in infrastructure has to happen in towns and villages in, in urban areas and remote uh, rural areas, but still in towns and villages. So I think they need to, they need to, educate their MLA on where this stuff happens. It happens in the towns and the villages um, where the people are. I, I, I'm going to ask a very odd question right now, okay. and I apologize for asking this question. <laughs> I listened to this, uh, the press conference after uh, Premier Smith announced her cabinet. I listened to her speech after uh, her cabinet was sworn in. Municipal, the municipalities was not raised once whether no, by no. be by the media or whether it be the word municipal in the address that the premier gave. Is it hard for Alberta municipalities to put municipal issues on the table when it seems like no one wants to talk about them? And I'm not trying to say like I am, but literally I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I'm, ch I'm chatting to you almost every other week this, yeah, right now because it seems like no one else is. Is it true it's, that is it hard for you? Yes, it's incredibly difficult. Like I, I can't. It's. It. I think it's because municipal issues aren't sexy issues. Honestly, they're they're not the they're not what catch the headlines. Which is why I appreciate your focus on it. Uh, they don't, um, you know, sewer lines and garbage pickup and potholes. Uh, new fire trucks those are really not you know what people want to hear about that what i see in the press is always quite often the controversy um or then you know healthcare was part of our platform for the election like one of our campaign priorities even though it's not in our realm of responsibility we elevated it up there so that we could be heard and pointed out that you know if they they don't do it or I mean, some municipalities and cold lake is a great example is are starting to do healthcare on their own they're buying buildings and they're leasing it out to doctors and making it attractive to attract which is not a municipal responsibility but they're getting up there so a roundabout answer to your question it's incredibly difficult quite often to get municipal issues in front of um provincial government just because they're not sexy but at the same time Closest to the people, we call ourselves um, the government of proximity, I guess. And so we do hear about, you know, when property taxes got, go up uh, much more than you would hear when income taxes go up. How do you make them more prevalent? Are you hoping that Rick McIver, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, are you hoping, because I, I, as of recording this, it could change by the time this episode comes out. Um, the, we, I do not know if the NDP have announced their shadow cabinet and who will be the shadow critic for municipal affairs. But are you hoping, are you hoping that municipal issues do take a front burner in the next four years? Because there are big issues that are coming up. LGFF, MSI is end, coming to an end. 
$30 billion infrastructure deficit, healthcare that's on a collapse in some rural and small town. I, I think I saw last night there was some uh, a hospital closed in rural Alberta, emergency room in rural Alberta, because they just didn't have the doctors. Are you right. hoping municipal issues will at least take some precedent in this next four years? Yeah, well, I hope so. And uh, I, I was just in the FCM conference in Toronto, which is our the Federation of Canadian Municipalities across Canada. And they're really pressing to get this new fiscal framework developed so that municipalities can understand or can maybe have different revenue tools and just a renewed relationship too. Um, but I noticed that, you know, the FCM talks to the MPs, my association talks to MLAs, and we don't want to get them all together very often. So I've already actually approached um, uh, Randy Bossano, the MP for Edmonton, uh, one of the two liberal MPs in all of Alberta. I, I've approached him to try to get a panel in this fall's convention with him and maybe Scott Pierce from FCM and uh, now Rick MacGyver to get get the conversation going. Rick's Rick has got some skill sets. I always call the municipal affairs minister the minister of everything. So because really they have to deal with healthcare, safety, infrastructure, transportation, and so they're. That position is my conduit to all the other ministers, and I will one more time. And Rick gets that, and so the fact that he's well liked and well respected and a smart man, I think he can probably have the capacity to elevate some municipal issues to the premier. Does it benefit you that he was a former alderman in the city of Calgary as well, so he I, knows I, the municipal issues? It really does, for sure. Yeah. Perfect. Um, my last question for you, this and this is the the sort of the just catch all in case I've missed something. What else do you want people to know about this cabinet from Alberta municipality standpoint? Oh, you caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I well, I was surprised at the size of it. Uh, honestly, I thought it would be a little bit smaller, but um, there's got to be reasons, and that sounds to me like our premier really wants to get a lot done in the next four years. That was kind of the sign that I got with the big cabinet was there's some serious issues that needed to be taken care of. And, um, you know, and, and obviously the relationship with the federal government is going to be an interesting one over the next four years, too. And she's made herself the minister of intergovernmental relations. So hopefully, hopefully we can see some improvement there because I never want to see a federal dollar left on the table because of um, a disagreement between the federal and the provincial government. I want to thank Kathy Heron for joining us today on this special episode of the Cross Border Interviews and to you, the listeners, for tuning in and being part of this conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and you will not want to miss them. Now, if you're also able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue grow and produce more high quality content focused at the municipal level. Every little bit helps and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes below. And now also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind the scenes content, show updates, and much, much more. The links to all of those social media platforms are also in the show notes. And finally... As much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real life in-person conversations with the people that we love, even if it's just for five minutes. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. Until then, just remember, just keep talking.